inequality has always been a hot topic. Every year on the 8th of March, it reminds us of the International Women's Day, which is a reminder of the fact that despite the fact that our society has come a long way, women still face challenges in the workplace on a daily basis. When you think 10, 20 or 50 years down the road, what would you imagine a typical leadership team would look like in corporate organizations and companies? Now, will C-suits be finally and more consistently and also equal when it comes to gender? Welcome to Tea Coffee. More and more women have moved away from their traditional roles as homemakers, as homemakers here, yeah, to holding top positions in, in the business sector. As an as increasing number of women just shake the shackles of traditional roles and mixing it up with that of their male counterparts. You're welcome, welcome to, to Tea, tea or coffee. coffee. My name is Mudipa Jacobs. And I am God's Time David. And I am Buraola Pupola. Okay, so now we have a familiar face, familiar to us, but not yes, familiar, familiar to our viewers. <laughs> okay, in the studio here with us. If you've been listening to our news, you'll be familiar with the voice, mm -hmm. God's time, David. So right. you're welcome. Thank you. Our news caster. Thank you. You're welcome to the show. Thank you. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so today we're talking about women in suicide position. And when we say suicide, a lot of people might not understand the idea behind it. Mm. You hear chief executive officer, you hear chief operating officer. Now the C in that mm. was where the C suit came, came, came from. from yeah. And now women in leader, I've, I've heard um, quite a lot of times when people say, okay, I don't, I don't like a woman being my boss. Uh, they can get so emotional and sentimental and all of that. So women holding leadership position, what is, what is the place in the country? and all of that. Okay, so um, I was going, I was researching and mm -hmm. going through the internet to check on, on women in suicide. And I realized that it could be likened to a glass ceiling. Now, what do I mean? When a woman is given the opportunity, both in public and private sectors, mm -hmm. you know, to handle positions, now she goes through get, going for seminars, workshop, getting qualifications like that of a male counterpart. And then after doing that, you realize that there are certain limits mm. and certain positions you can actually get to mm. as, a woman. as a woman. There are certain things you would not do because it is assumed, there's this gender stereotype, it's assumed that those tasks or responsibilities cannot be handled by, by a woman. A woman exactly. She wouldn't have the strength, the strength. and be um, the strength to be, you know, f to face such responsibilities. Mm. Meanwhile, it's not true because you see women actually taking the space mm -hmm. and doing mm -hmm. extraordinarily well. And you realize that when you don't let them break through and get to that position, they're actually younger women. Mm -hmm. You hear girls say, okay, I want to be like Ibuko Awoshika, I want to be like Okonjo Iwela, mm. breaking through political sector, Sectors. breaking through the economical se mm. sector, doing extraordinarily well. But then when you don't give these women the chance to get to that position mm -hmm. and power, even the younger ones feel discouraged mm. and you know, there's no hope. You know, you know, mm -hmm. I, I think that it has to do with the fact that um, the society, um, men, let me just say men, okay. I think they feel kind of intimidated that um, women could do so much well. You know, women have um, has the ability to multitask. Mm -hmm. A woman mm -hmm. could be cooking and she's taking care of the baby. She would want to be doing one or two things. So I think it's basically out of the fact that they feel that we can actually, do, they know we can do better, mm -hmm. but they do not want to accept the fact that we can do better. Or face reality. You know, I will come from the angle that it's amazing that in the 21st century, we are still having that mentality that is a practical society, so the male should dominate some certain positions mm -hmm. in the society. For me, I find it amazing when women attain a certain level Never. in their career, yeah. and then we go about saying, oh, she has someone that helped her. Right. She did something to get to that position. Mm -hmm. And when a man gets to such a position, we say it's hard, work. hard work. Exactly, mm -hmm. say it's hard work. You know, work. recently on social media, there was a buzz about two particular actresses that, uh, I think they acquired a house, landed property, yeah. and then people said, okay, it's the tag they gave it, small girls mm -hmm. be small girl be good. And I'm like, must it be about that? How about say, okay, she worked so hard to get to that position? Yeah, I, How about say, okay, she... She, she did something that, uh, that made her deserve where she is now and not that, okay, she had to do this, she had to go through the back door 
to get to that position. And when he's a man, we say he's hard work. But actually, in as, in, in as much as th that could be true, mm. but then I, I just don't like the idea why they usually target just to the women. Mm. Women, Do you yes. think because the if, men if, can yes. do If the house do? was gotten by a man, mm -hmm. or if the supposed person who got that house got it for a man, I don't think it would have been a big in, deal. I was having a conversation all. with someone over the weekend, mm -hmm. and the person was still angry that this person bought this actress the house. And I'm like, would you have been angry if she it was got for, a man? for the man? Exactly. And if a man came forward to say, okay, I acquired his landed property, would mm -hmm. you say, hmm, he did this to get it? Exactly. It's it's really it's it doesn't really make sense to mm. me. I was going through I was going to something online over the weekend and I saw that um, for, Fortune five hundred companies have just twenty six CEOs. Hmm. They have just twenty six. Last year was thirty six. And to this, no, 32 rather, okay. then this year is 26. What's going on? What's happening? You know, another thing we actually need to look at is for women to be more courageous and believe in themselves that exactly. they can do it. They can do because it. it is one thing for you to know that there's a stereotype. Mm -hmm. It is another thing for you to want to change that stereotype. stereotype and stand for who you actually are. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? So I, I was going through um, an article. I realized that according to Forbes now, okay. Men, when, they, when you want to apply for jobs, you find out that men actually look out for, okay, maybe 60% of the qualifications. If they meet up to like 60%, they feel they, they are feel. qualified, they feel they can go for the job. But mm. then a woman would always want to look out for 100% qualifications. She wants to look out for, okay, okay, they, they said you have to be 27. Mm, I'm not 27, okay, fine. And they not apply again. Mm -hmm. But a man will still look at it, okay. What's I the difference between 27 and, and 20? And he would yeah. still apply. Still apply. You want to meet 100% before you apply for a job, which is not right. Women should believe in themselves. Yes. They should be able to break in. And like I said, women are natural leaders. Mm -hmm. Imagine making decisions on running your home, running your, home. your husband, your children. Being, mm -hmm. being, being different personalities and mm -hmm. still maintaining who you who are. You are. Definitely. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, leaders are risk takers. Yeah. If you would agree. And a woman is a risk taker. Yes, I definitely. Am risk -taker. <laughs> because having to get pregnant and carry your child for nine months, nine months and you still risk, go to you work you, you while you're work. pregnant. Exactly. You still go to work and spend for your family. Earned, so. Mm -hmm. so, so I think I think it all boils down to women believing in themselves, as you have said. Yes. You know, women knowing that they can actually stand in a position that a man stands. They can actually do things. But I like the fact that these days, women are actually breaking that, that barrier. Mm -hmm. yeah. You see a woman riding a bike. You see a woman riding a... Uh, uh, driving a bus or doing things that we've already, you know, assigned to the male gender. So mm -hmm. I like the fact that we're actually breaking and then the people, people actually, to do more. People actually feel somehow when they see women yes, do certain they things. Most times they, feel, they are surprised mm -hmm. and most times they feel inspired. But exactly. trust me, the society is getting reformed and they're getting mm -hmm. used to used things to like this, actually. So women's been natural. And my word for every man there is that be a risk taker. Mm -hmm. Break through the glass ceiling or whatever limit or boundary yeah. break into it and then you you would excel yes we have to go on break definitely interesting conversation but it continues immediately after the break do stay tuned it's tea or coffee on high impact tv <music> We're talking about women in C-suite positions. And before we went on break, we were also talking about um, how strong women could be. Yes. Why um, we're not given equal positions in the society and how mm. important, how pertinent it is for women to begin to stand up for themselves, mm. begin to acquire skills, do one or two things, and try to see how to make yourself relevant in the society. And you know, to spice up the conversation, we have our guest in the studio. She is Odun Olua Longe, the co-founder and CEO of DIY Law. Good morning. Good morning. You're welcome, ma'am. Welcome, welcome. Morning, ma Good okay, morning. It's good to have you here on Tea Coffee. My pleasure. Okay, now at the beginning of your career, did you think you'd actually get to this position that you are in now? Um, actually, to some extent, yes. So okay. um, maybe not as CEO of DIY Law, mm -hmm. but I've always yearned from, I've always been ambitious, and I've always known that I would, you know, get to a leadership position. But originally, you know, what I thought for myself as my career was I'd work in a company, work in a law firm, I started my career in a law firm. Okay. Then from a law firm, moving to a company, you know, some financial institution, which was what I did, and rise in that financial institution, institution. till I got to the top. 
But along the line, I decided I want to tow my, I wanted to tow my own path, and that's when you know my co-founders and I came together, mm. and we started our own company. But I've always known that, you know, for me, I've always aspired to be in a leadership position. You know, most times it's difficult for women to attain such Absolutely. positions. Why is that? Why do we have that? So, um, I, you know, for women, it's a balance of many things. And, okay. you know, I would allude to some of what you have said before. For a woman, there are a lot of things you're juggling together. You're juggling your career. You're juggling the home front. You're juggling so many things. And, you know, there's some things that... Um, kind of exclude women, you know, you, there's certain careers that you say there's like an old boys club. Mm -hmm. Mm. So many women, oh, I have to go home, get things ready for my children, get, get them ready for school the next day. However, you know, the man goes to say a club, to hang out with mm -hmm. the chairman mm -hmm. or to hang yeah. out with the CEO. Now those things naturally disenfranchise, um, disenfranchise a woman mm -hmm. and reduce the chances of a woman rising. But, you know, as a woman in that's ambitious, you also need to find, you know, you need to create those opportunities for yourself where you can, if you can't go to the club, you need to create some other opportunities where you can, outside of work, have a social relationship Interaction. with the mm -hmm. leadership. Okay, so um, I would like to um, call you a lover. Right? <laughs> I'll call you a lover. Over now, entrepreneurs. Yeah, mm -hmm. so how would you describe what um, a woman who is in a C-suite uh, position should be like? What kind of boss are you? Um, for each person, it's different. Yeah. But I'd say for me, you know, what, what I think is um, I was completing some questionnaire recently, okay. and one of the questions was what is what would I call my greatest attribute of leader? What do I think um, the attribute of leadership would be? For me, I'll say it's empathy. I think you need to put yourself in the position of the people who work with you. You need to feel what they feel, understand what they're going through. Now, we have a young startup company. It's a technology company. And we work with many young people. It's a bit of a different generation. Mm -hmm. Some of the people that work with us, are, it's their first job. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you need to empathize with them and not, you know, judge them by the standards of people like maybe my co-founders and I that have worked in several, mm. you know, several places before we started yeah. the business. So it's um, also understanding their family issues, understanding what they're going through. Uh, we'll get there. Yeah. Uh, we'll get there. Now, what kind of boss are you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what are the options? Because <laughs> what are the options on what kind of boss I am? Um, so, you, like, how do you mean? I, I want to know what kind of, how, how's your work relationship? Like, what um, we so run, in this uh, position, mm -hmm. how do you relate with them? Like, we run a relatively flat structure. Mm -hmm. okay. We're all on first name basis. Um, I know everybody's backstory. So, oh. I want to say that. I want to believe I'm a friendly boss, but okay. I think it's a question. <laughs> okay, so you I think it's a question you should a... ask my team members and not okay, me. That's so word. you come from like mm -hmm. knowing them personally. Yes, uh, that's very important. And being, okay. being able important. to relate with them. That, that is very important for okay. us, actually. <laughs> All right. So, um, do you think that there would be a big difference between an organization that is run or owned by a man and an organization that is managed by a woman or owned by a woman? Um. I think diversity is good. I okay. think, you know, there should be a balance. You know, there's a strength that the men bring and there's a strength that a woman brings. brings. So I think that um, they bring different strengths. Of course, um, statistics have shown that when a woman is in a leadership position mm -hmm. in a company, that there's, um, they tend to yield better results. And that's because, you know, you're able to bring the other skills you have that come naturally to you as a woman. The intuition, women are naturally more intuitive. Mm -hmm. So all these natural inclinations you're able to bring on board to business. But I think a balance would always... Um, always strike a balance. Always a strike a balance, mm -hmm. although that's not the case for us. <laughs> okay. So when it comes to emotional mm -hmm. intelligence, it's of the notion that men are stronger than women. Ah, your social <laughs> right? Okay. So, you define emotional intelligence. Um, like how they can handle their emotions in the workspace. So, emotional intelligence is not about keeping a strong face. It's okay. not about not crying. Mm -hmm. Emotional intelligence is about being able to relate with people. People, yes. At you know, at a fair in a fair manner, manner. being able to connect with people emotionally. Mm -hmm. So. You know, the fact that a man doesn't break down to cry doesn't mean that he's emotionally intelligent. Mm -hmm. Because if you're just stoic and you're not able to connect with your team, you're not able to connect with your colleagues, you're not able to connect with your clients, 
then of what uses that stoic, stoic. look. Okay. So emotional intelligence is being able to react to different, to situations, different situations at different times. And I think it's a function of the person you are. It's not okay. necessarily because you're a man or a woman. I don't think men are more emotionally intelligent than women. Okay. Okay. So no, the <laughs> it's a that function notion. of who you are. Yeah. It's a function of your circumstances. A lot of things contribute to who yeah, we are emotionally. Yeah, the environment yeah. where you're born in, the kind of schools you went, the mm. kind of friends. Person a lot of things co contribute to your emotional intelligence, but okay. it doesn't have to do with gender. Gender. Okay, so okay. I would have to come to style. Mm. We all have styles. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you think? Um, what do you think leadership style should be like for a woman in C-suite position? I would ask. I don't know what your style is. Mm. Everybody should have their style. style. If I am in that position today, I would have my style. Of course, I was in such position <laughs> during NYC. Of okay. course. Mm. Now, so what should be? Um, your style, what should be your yeah, style for style women, for women mm. in such positions? So leadership style varies. It has to do with your character. Okay. You know, it has to do with your personality. I've never been a very, how do I say it? I've never been a very aggressive person. Okay. So when it comes to my leadership style is more of, I need you to understand what you're doing. I need you mm. to understand the task. So I will explain, at, um, like in my place of work, we do not raise our voices. Mm, okay. It's never done. It's not, you, you, you don't find it on. And because I've worked in, pre, in a number of places, you know, one of the places I worked in my past experience, in my past experience, the culture was you don't raise your voice at work. Right now, it's a woman, it's a female CEO that's leading the company. And it's the same thing, you know, something we've also carried on to where we are now. We don't raise our voices. My style is more of let's work together. together. Let's understand what we're doing. You can't, as a leader, you can't get your task done alone. So you mm. need the buy-in of the people you work with. So if you're going this way and then everybody you're working with is left behind, mm -hmm. the likelihood of failure is very high. Okay, <laughs> all right. So um, I'd like to ask, why mm. do you think it's important mm -hmm. for mm. women to be in C-suite positions. Yes, because you know, last week Thursday we had um, to celebrate the International Day of the Girl, girl Child, child. Mm -hmm. and a lot of people came out to men talk about empowering the girl child for her Absolutely. to also get to this position, the leadership position, handling that. Mm -hmm. So why is it very important that people are talking about it that women have to break into mm -hmm. sectors, you know, to make it? Yeah, you you just named one of the reasons, mm -hmm. you know. The world has been, generation after generation, women have been, you know, put in a certain bottle, put in a certain flask, this is how a woman should be. Mm. So there's a need to lay example for upcoming generation of females, mm. of women, that you can be anything, absolutely anything you want. You can mm. go anywhere you want. We, you know, see a few people we are aspiring to be like, and it's very important that that continues. You know, um, there's still a very... Excuse me. There's Sorry. still, you know, the difference between the number. There's still a great, a wide gap yeah. between how many female are in leadership position and how many male are in leadership position. So one is to set an example. Two is women actually bring a lot to the table. You know, you bring um, a difference. You bring your own skills. I think there's a reason. The same way. Um, there should be diversity, gender mm -hmm. diversity. There should be ethnic diversity too. Mm -hmm. You know, um, recently we had to hire, and we looked around and we saw that oh, we had too many Yoruba people, and we made it a point of duty that the next person we're going to hire wasn't going to be Yoruba. Mm -hmm. Everybody culturally, you bring things to fore, so mm -hmm. it's good when you're building something. You have different point of views mm -hmm. that you know, the different point of view will bring will bring about a better result than if all of you are you know facing the mm -hmm. same way, have the same perspective about issues. It all becomes the same thing. Same thing. Yeah. For some women, they have their work life. They have mm. the way they are when they're at work. They have the way they are when they're at home or social gathering. Mm. But some believe that uh, they should be one person. The way you mm. act at home should be the way you act in the workplace. It should be the way you act when you're in a social gathering. So how mm. do you think women should balance you know, these different uh, parts mm. of their life? Again, you know, I always want to put this caveat, each person is different. Okay. We're all different people and there are different um, reasons why we behave, you know, the way we do. Mm. But for me, for me personally, I can speak for myself and I can speak for my co-founders who okay. I see. I'm the same person. Anywhere. Anywhere you meet mm. me. I'm the same. And I think it also has to do with, you know, there are different reasons. For me, it's, I need, for, if you say, Odun did this. 
anybody can say, no, she did this, no, she didn't do this. Okay. I'm the same person socially, I'm the same person at work. Everything is intertwined, <laughs> so. Okay. Okay, so um, I'd like to talk about formal and informal education. Um, there's this um, woman, follow and show, I like, I like, Hija. Hija. I like Hija, yes. She doesn't have a university degree, mm -hmm. she doesn't. But she acquired some skills mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that help her to get, get to where she, she is today. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you think about getting a university degree and skills acquisition? acquisition. acquisition. There's something we do at work. If you check online or anything and you Google all the positions we've um, tried to fill in, you would not find um, BSc, LLB, or you won't find 2-1. Hmm. And that's deliberate. Because I don't think necessarily is a function of your university education. Hmm. Okay. There's a place for skills acquisition. Yeah. And I'm sorry to say, is it the university education? I schooled in Nigeria, so it's not about anybody. Is it okay. the university education we get here? that actually determines your person, that determines how good you are at you work. Are. So, and there are different circumstances that determine whether a person is able to acquire formal education or not. Mm. Formal education is good. I'm not ruling it out. There are certain, apart from the education you get, there are certain disciplines you learn, you learn by being yes. in a university environment. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't discountenance or make any, um, any lesser the person who has a vocational skill. You can be successful with or without the university education. education. Okay, let me go a little. <laughs> let me just say <laughs> this. So, if I have if I have some level of skills mm -hmm. and I want to work with you mm -hmm. and I do not have a university degree, degree, I just have maybe O and D or school set, and I'm good at what I do. Mm -hmm. Would you employ me and pay me well? I have someone on my team who doesn't hmm. have a university education. Hmm. Okay. She was in school. She had issues in school, she and school. she couldn't finish. But she, we, we, we hired her. We knew that and we hired her either way. Mm. She had what we were looking for. Okay. So, All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we actually know that that, that, that is rare. Because mm -hmm. it's, most it's of rare. the times, yes, most rare. of the times, mm. is that mm -hmm. they are paid less. Less. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and they, they are not more. employed at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or they are not they employed yeah. at all. <laughs> okay. That's the way it is. <laughs> Unfortunately, in many places, but it shouldn't be. Yes, it definitely. Be. It's not something mm -hmm. that should. Okay, so now you would agree with me that every organization, every company has the target and mm. their goals. Now, mm -hmm. as a woman handling a leadership position, mm. you have people along with you, working mm -hmm. with you. You have your family. You need mm -hmm. to balance both work life and family. Now, how do you carry them along, even knowing that a lot is going on mm -hmm. right now? How do you carry your team along, you know, to achieve that target and goal mm -hmm. as a woman in C-suite position? Okay, so um, in terms of carrying the team along, I think it's very important as when you're in a leadership position that you get everybody's buy-in on your team. The first day anybody resumes with us, we do two days orientation. Okay. And we're talking about our vision, our goal, where we want to be. Because if there's one part, if, you know, it's like a car, if there's one part of the car that's not working, the entire car will stop. stop mm. yes. So everyone needs to understand where are you going? What's the journey going to be like? And when you have that buy-in, it's easier for people to understand their task. You have to do, you, it's, you do less micromanaging. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very important that, you know, when you're in a leadership position that you get the buy-in of everybody who works with you through different ways. Also, culture is very important. And if you don't do things like that, it's likely that... Um, someone just doesn't understand the culture. And that's, we've seen culture just, you know, destroy a number of companies. It's not necessarily fraud or that. So it's very important that you indoctrinate people when they start working. Indoctrinate is a strong word. You let them <laughs> understand <laughs> the culture, your culture. And it also starts from recruitment. You know, when you're interviewing people, there's some soft skills and there's some characters that you look at, you look out look for. for. It's not just about, oh, this person got a first class, this person got a 2-1. Mm -hmm. You'll be surprised that the person got a 2-1, but the person is very arrogant. I will just come and destroy everything you've built. One person can destroy everything you've built. If someone is very bitter, it can destroy your whole culture. It can destroy what you do. So it's very important that you 
recruit right, and then you also orientate the people into the system. So that's how we get the buy-in of our team members to building our dream. Okay, okay. So you actually need to look out for what that person can bring to the mm, table, absolutely. not just about your university degree or absolutely. your qualifications. Mm -hmm. All right, the conversation continues immediately after the break. It's still tea or coffee on High Impact Television. Do stay tuned because you do not want to miss out on today's topic. When you think about it, there's a lot to celebrate in our lives. From the smallest milestones to our biggest moments, we'll pamper you at High Impact Planet. Whatever the occasion, let's celebrate you at High Impact Planet, where fun just got real. To our amazing viewers all over the world, this is Tea or Coffee on High Impact Television. Now, we've been talking about women in C-suite positions, and during the break, I was painting a scenario to you, you know, of a, of a female prefect and a male prefect in school, and she was complaining on social media of the fact that as a male prefect, he automatically becomes the chairman, and then he can go into the principal's office anytime to say something and then it's being taken seriously. But when she being the representative for the females go, she's not taken seriously. Mm -hmm. And I'm asking, should training women or even girls to be in this position start from start secondary from school? Age. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> it should start from secondary school. It okay. should start from when they're kids, from mm -hmm. primary school. That's why we join Brownies, Girls Guide and mm -hmm. all of that. But for a girl like that who's a prefect, I'd encourage her to walk into her principal's office mm -hmm. and state it's that why am I not being taken serious? I'm a prefect is a prefect. We both have an equal voice. You know, there's a question, there's sometimes when, I'm, when I hesitate to do things, I ask myself, what would Oprah do? What would Oprah Winfrey do? Mm -hmm. So that encourages me. She takes things by the exactly. own. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So for her, she should take it by the own and walk up to her principal and get her just... Um, had just treatment. You know, but I'm even saying yeah. that why should we even have, can't we just have one person? Mm -hmm. A male and a female should compete. Should compete. And whoever Absolutely. wins becomes a chairman automatically. Mm -hmm. Because Absolutely. sometimes yeah. it's, it's, it's quite, you know, tricky when you have yeah. a, female, a female and then you have a male. Yeah. And What's male has now to, the point of yeah. having so a male? Exactly. In most schools we have head girl, head boy. And yes, balance. head girl, yeah. head boy. But, you know, then it should be equal since exactly. we're having two heads, two heads. but not one person. Because it starts with the younger generation. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But I would encourage that girl to go and speak to her parents about, about, about it. Okay. Apart from that, I think um, it should begin from the homes. Mm -hmm. Our mothers should learn to talk to the girl child. Tell her you can do it. Encourage her because mm -hmm. if you as a mother do not talk to your child, do not inspire her from home, mm -hmm. She would not see herself exactly the she way bold in that enough. Exactly. she yes. won't be bold to to speak up for herself. Mm -hmm. So I think it should start from the home. Yes, women or yeah. mothers should learn to encourage, encourage the, girl the girl child. Yeah. So um, now there's this thing about men. They have clubs. You have the Lion Club mm. and all of that. And there's this general notion that when women have meetings. It's mm. um, maybe a co monthly Club contribution N, yeah. or whatever <laughs> you have to do. And even at that, you see that envy comes in. Mm -hmm. mm. Jealousy. Mm -hmm. Jealousy comes in. I don't want to say we're wired. We're having that conversation. <laughs> and I think we're we that wired that way. That way. <laughs> we have that natural jealousy mm -hmm. in us. How can we curb that? Because we actually need each other yes. Yes. to get there. No, to you can't get there on your own. So how do we... Mm. So I, I don't know if it's a thing of the past, if it's a thing of the older generation, okay. or if it is that I've just been fortunate, but I, my circle of, of girlfriends have been very supportive. Mm. And you know, we have a group of girls, sometimes like what my girl said, we read together, we, the way we got together was we started a book club, oh, and we cool. meet together, and we encourage each other. We don't meet often enough for the book club anymore, but we still belong to a group together, mm -hmm. and we're constantly encouraging each, each other, other in our career, praying for each other, you know, whatever needs to be done. 
I have other, you know, female circles too, and it's been that. So, but if such exists, I'd encourage, we need each other, as you said. You know, I don't think that the reason why you right, the reason why some men rise as much as they rise is because they belong to these clubs mm -hmm. and they help each other. They help each other rise at work. I've been a beneficiary of amazing female bosses that have helped me in my career. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's something that should be paid forward. And it's, um, you know, as we're talking about here, it should be conscious. Yeah, I, 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 I think it's just a misconception, actually. I, I've been fortunate to find more supportive women. But the general notion is a stereotype that has been built that women backbite, women envy mm -hmm. each other, women. I think it's a stereotype, and we as women need to stop justifying stop that stereotype and yeah. living true to who we are, which is supporters and enablers of each other. Mm. Actually, because mm. I don't know if you can remember the story of two international artists yes. doing the yes. same genre <laughs> right. music, mm. and then they go all out there the fight, fighting each other, mm -hmm. fighting mm -hmm. each other on the same coast. But guys, do it. You have East Coast and West Coast fight, international artists. Mm. Why don't well, we make an issue out of that? That's the point. And and the and first point. time that the female one will come, yeah, in will come in public, but males do it all the time, mm -hmm. but nobody makes a drama, makes any drama <laughs> out of it. That was why I, I, like yeah. the, I like the fact that you mm. had to mention that we should stop justifying the mm. stereotype, yeah, this mentality that people mm. already have about mm. women being jealous of each other, being mm -hmm. envious of each other. I mean, we could be doing exactly. the same thing, and all Absolutely. I would look out for is how you would also get to the peak exactly. of your career, Absolutely. how would could, we could contribute to each mm -hmm. other's lives to help each other. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now let's talk about women who... Uh, because I've had situations of women that do not know how to balance their work life. Mm. <laughs> challenges, let me, let me put okay. it that way. The challenges they face at work, they make it sort of affect their whole their affairs. Home. Mm. Mm. And then you hear people say, okay, since you started work, you've not been the woman I got married to, or mm. you've not been a good mother to our children. So do you think women in C-suite position can actually make good mothers and good wives? and also run, run their run home the affairs. Home. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, but I think that we need to dissuade ourselves of that notion that anybody is superwoman. Mm -hmm. And I think the women themselves also need to dissuade themselves of the fact that you're a superwoman. Mm -hmm. um, you should get as much help as you can. You're taking care of the home front. You're at work. Get a driver, get nannies. There is no shame in that. A lot of men try to shame women that, oh, mm -hmm. you have a cook, mm -hmm. you have a nanny. You no, you're trying to make your home functional. You need as much help as you can. A man doesn't need all of that because he just goes to work and everything is perfect. But as a woman, what you need you need to do what you need to do to make your work to, to strike life. you know, to work your to strike your strike work life balance, balance mm -hmm. to make your home front happy and to as well excel at work. So if you have to get a cook to help you, if you have to get a maid to help you, if you have to rely on family Fortunately, we live in a society where everybody is happy to help. Mm -hmm. Your mother will come and sit with you. Your sister will come and sit with you. Get all the help you can. Get a washing machine. Get <laughs> all the kitchen gadgets. There yes, is no that shame make your work easy. that you'll make your life mm -hmm. easier. Mm -hmm. Because, yes, there's a tendency to, you know, if you're angry at work Bring and you come back home, it's, there's a tendency to do that. And it's, just a, it's not just about the woman. Men do Men that, do. too. Yes. But it's just harder because you now have to you know, put up a happy face for the children, children and all yes. of that. Or make your life easier so that the, you know, it, it reduces the occurrence of such situations. I used situations. to call myself a superwoman. So, <laughs> <laughs> there's really, nah, there's really okay. so let's talk about uh, women in C-suite uh, positions mm -hmm. that have to deal with uh, should I say difficult men, you know, in the in the workspace? Because mm -hmm. some women tend to um, not be able to handle issues properly mm -hmm. when it comes to them having to do with a junior staff, like a male, a male. Yeah. because you know, they feel like she's a woman. Why mm -hmm. should she talk to me that manner? She's my boss, but mm -hmm. I'm a man. She shouldn't mm -hmm. talk to me like that. My ego is on, at stake and all. Mm -hmm. So how can women handle such situations in such a way that? You, they still, you still know, let him know that, yes, you are the boss, but then you don't go out of work ethics. Mm -hmm. um, so th that's a very common occurrence. Mm -hmm. It's not unusual. I've seen it happen. But um, as a woman, it's unfortunately, when you react even normally, they will say you're being emotional. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So um, it's very important that you handle it professionally. I believe that when women find themselves in such situation, you have a conversation with the person. So it doesn't, doesn't have to be, 
you don't bring yourself to the level of that person. You don't mm. demean yourself to the level of that person. But you're rightfully the boss. So you invite the person to your office or a private space. Have a conversation. Call out the nonsense. I'm sorry, that is nonsense. <laughs> exactly. And you call it out. You, you, I, I'm a bit um, confrontational. Oh. I don't believe in um, means in words. Mm. I think you should approach things. So if it was me, that is what I would do. I would spell out what you're doing and let you know that it's not allowed here. Mm. And if it continues, you take all the um, normal work, you know, a query next. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's insubordination. It yeah. is what it is. Exactly. Every workplace frowns at insubordination. So you can issue a query next, and if it has to be fired, Fire. <laughs> Talking about firing people. Mm. Now, you've been in this position for quite some time now. Mm. What, are your, what are your leadership lessons so far? And what can you advise um, some women in C-suite positions? positions? Because a lot of them are watching mm. you right now all over the world. So mm. what advice would you give them to help their team thrive? Like I said, Ellen, empathy is very, very important. It's um, important that you're able to understand where your employees, where your team members are coming from, so that you do not, um, you know, so that you're being fair in your, there will be time to call people out, there will be time to be, you know, nice about correction. There's a place for harsh discipline, there's a place for soft discipline. So empathy is very important. Um, I also think that, you know, when you're in a leadership position, you should have an open door policy. You should make it easy for your team members to be able to talk to you. Because um, there are a lot of things that might naturally, and then depending on the type of organization you run, might naturally not come to your knowledge because of the position you occupy, but they talk amongst themselves. So make it easy for them to talk okay. to you, to, okay. to be able to tell you things, because you need to know what's happening what's in happening? the entire mm. organization. Um, also, hi hiring is very, very important. Hire for the culture. Hire not just because of the person's experience or the person's and um, grades but because the person also has will fit into what you're doing because we are still relatively small you know a team of 12 we are still involved in hiring but when you're able to for women in larger organizations it might be for leaders in larger organizations it might be harder but that's where the building a good culture right from the beginning mm -hmm. comes in so if you've built that culture mm -hmm. it's easier for whoever the hiring manager is okay. at that point to yeah hire. Right. so what are your leadership lessons so what have far, you learned? Th those are my lessons, you know, hire right, because, you know, we've had an instance where we've not hired right, and mm. we had to make amends. Oh. So those are part of my lessons. Okay. Okay. Um, we've had, in terms of empathy, we, we've done things just because we thought, we, my, you know, my co-founders and I, just because we mm. thought we're doing what was fair. Right, yeah. But apparently, you know, my the team member, the colleague we were fair to, saw it as like a great act of, act of kindness so and she's our biggest ambassador everywhere. Wow. Like I've heard wow. from other people, gosh, this is your top staff. Oh, she talks so much about <laughs> you. She talks so much. So, you know, for us, it wasn't because we wanted her to do that, but okay. we just did things because we were fair. You know, when someone joins you, we had an instance where someone joined us, had accommodation problem. If someone is not sleeping well, they can't give their best at mm, work. We had to yeah. step in to help mm -hmm. the person solve that. So I, I think, you know, it's just, and that's where the empathy comes in. Understanding what your team is going through and being there for them. They will give you your best, their best when they're happy. Mm -hmm. If you don't have happy team members, then you're not going to get the best from them. And I don't know how how much that does for productivity and getting achieving your goals as a leader. Okay, you mm. know, a lot of women actually feel they should be independent. They should not seek assistance. Seeking assistance makes them feel like they're weak, weak mm. or um, mm. meaning that they can't achieve this alone. So now I would like to know how important is the role of a mentor and someone who could guide you in the path of your career? Mm. How important is it for a woman occupying a leadership position? So I, I, um, when you're in a leadership position, you need to talk to people. Mm. There are a lot of things. I'm fortunate because you know, there are three of us that started our company, so we mm -hmm. talk to each other. But there are instances where we're not available to talk to each other. Um, two people I talk to a lot are actually my former bosses, and they're both female. Mm -hmm. I've been fortunate to have very good former bosses. Mm -hmm. um, one of my former bosses on our advisory board, our work, 
And, you know, it's important to be able to, you, you go through a lot. There's a pressure, especially as an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. there's a pressure of work. If you don't have a mentor, a role model, or a confidant, you can call it any name. It might not you know, necessarily be the mentor, mm -hmm. mentor, but you need to be able to rely on someone. Mm. You know, I, I talk to different people for different things. I can't say, like for me, I can't say that there's this one person I run to for everything. But there are different people that I confide in and I you know, seek strength from when I'm going through different aspects. Some women, some men. But it's very, very important. Um, no man is an island. Mm -hmm. And um, if you're trying to bottle up everything, you might one day just bust out. And that's when they say, yeah. oh, you're being emotional yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and all of that. Or you might make wrong decisions. Or you might collapse under the weight of it all. So it's mm -hmm. very good to, especially when you're in a leadership position, men or women, talk to people. You know, If you're going through pressure at work, confide in people. Um, there are people to get examples from. There are people that have role models that they don't even know that they're mentoring me from afar, that mm -hmm. I'm learning from. Mm -hmm. Some in Nigeria, some are not in Nigeria, but you know, read a lot, learn from people. No man is an island or a bastion of knowledge. So whether it's for learning, whether it's for relying on people, you just need people. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do you think, let me start this way, women um, are more tough when you're in leadership positions. Uh -huh. <laughs> What's the meaning you know, of tough? What's the meaning of tough? Do you know? Because I've heard people say, okay, when they hear, um, ah, my boss is a is a female, they're like, ah, she's going to be tough, uptight, and all. But if it's a male, ah, I can easily talk yeah. to him. You know, okay, I, I can actually Ooh, relate to what true. she's mm. saying because uh, a friend of mine once shared her experience. Okay. Of, she was having menstrual cramps and then <laughs> she she felt that the pain was so severe mm -hmm. and she needed to go home even after reporting to work that day and then she walked up to her female boss and <laughs> when she got there the mom was like okay should i shock you i am also in, i am yeah. also menstruating right now so you cannot use that mm, as an excuse, excuse. because excuse. i am at work i am even handling more things i'm going for meetings than you are so it is not enough excuse for you to want to go home. Mm. I think so that's just an unkind person. That's just an unkind person. person. It's, it doesn't have to do with being a male or female. female. We mm -hmm. all know that the, you know each person is different. Your biological, mm. the way you're, you you feel during your time of the month is different for each person. And I don't think it has to do with gender. I've had um, three buses at different points in time. Two of them females, like direct buses. They've been amazing. They are still in my life till Two date. Like, I still saw one on Friday. They were amazing as bosses, and that's why I still have a relationship with, with them, them outside of work. So I don't, for me, that has debunked the stereotype of women, women are tough, tough bosses. Mm -hmm. And because I've been fortunate to have, my male boss too was amazing, you know. And because I've been fortunate to have good bosses, it would be a sin for me not to be, <laughs> not a, good to be a good boss. Exactly. <laughs> now, now so. I feel I feel I feel weird. But she weird? said to be unkind. Like um, during my service year, okay. I I was the president of some group. Okay. And I treated someone. The lady actually gave excuses that she couldn't make it for CDS because she was on. I queried her. Now, I feel really <laughs> bad. I feel terrible. <laughs> because so long, as you, so long as you know the person is not lying. Because, that because we're different mind people. Felt that we're very if, different people. Some mm -hmm. people can do everything in life. But mm. the, the truth and is, like, what if we were supposed to share money that day? Mm -hmm. That was that. Well, she says she, she can't make but it. But she might still not have been able to come. Mm. Yes, actually, it's not okay. all about the money. <laughs> okay, okay. So, so that's one lesson. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm going to just ask you this now. How do women in seated positions, how do they overcome boundaries? I know there are boundaries. The fact that mm. we're women alone, mm. the fact that we're women alone creates boundaries. Mm. How do women in seated positions overcome boundaries. I know you didn't just get there. You mm -hmm. went through some stuff. Exactly. Mm. How, how did you get through it? Ask yourself, what will my male colleague do? Mm. Mm. And do it. Mm. I can do you know, for things. me, you know, yeah. what will my male colleague do, do and do it? No, but but and there are actually positions mm. whereby, I've seen organizations where they tell you that, okay, you can be the supervisor, you can be the team lead, you can be a manager, but to get to that um, CEO, C-suite position, mm -hmm. They feel it is too challenging. 
for a for a woman to handle, handle because she has a lot of things to to do already, family and all. You know, for me, I would probably leave such an organization. I will work in such an organization mm -hmm. and find where they encourage me to thrive. If you look at a couple of the banks now, they're actually female CEOs. Mm -hmm. So yes, banking is supposed to be one of the toughest, toughest sectors. sectors. But sectors. you have female CEOs and the rose in ranks. So there's no, what sector, there's no excuse why a woman cannot be the CEO or the head of any company. Any company. And if you're working in a place that stifles your growth, mm -hmm. then you probably want to look for, you know, exit that place and change jobs and go to where they would make you thrive and make you, you know, and harness the best of your talents. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, let me just throw this open. Mm. I, like I said, when we were having our uh, talking, when you said a program, mm. that it's amazing when a woman achieves a particular thing. Mm -hmm. Probably she gets to the, a C suite position mm -hmm. and then men I um, mean and then uh, people will say she had to go to the back door mm -hmm. to, get to, to get to that position. Mm -hmm. But if it's a man they say he works hard. Why do we have and sometimes it's women that actually say it about their fellow woman mm -hmm. and say, okay, uh, she, did she did something before she, something, she could yes, get that position. I, Why? Why yeah, I, I, really, I really don't know the answer, but I think that's one of the injustices we face mm -hmm. as women. The assumption is, you know, you must have done something to get to, to, get to where you mm -hmm. are. It's not necessarily a product of your hard work. It's sad because, you know, that's the stereotype, but I mm -hmm. think more women should talk about their careers. One woman, well, when well, it comes to that, people don't talk a lot. So you should talk about your work. You should be happy mm. to share what you're doing. I think the more we talk about it, the more women in you know, C-suit positions talk about their experiences, the more this will be debunked because mm -hmm. people can then see the reality of, oh, this is how I rose. I okay. went from this company to that company and all of that. Mm. Okay. Now, um, a young CEO, mm -hmm. a young aspiring CEO, female CEO, mm. what do you think she should do? Um, what, what's the line? I don't know how you started, but mm. what would you tell or advise a young, a young female CEO, aspiring CEO to do? Mm -hmm. I'd say be bold, you know. Now, bold does not have to be that, oh, you're a very, you don't have to be talkative. You can be an introvert or an extrovert, but you should be bold. You bold, should take yeah. opportunities. Okay. And then I'll say read a lot. Mm. Like, there's so much knowledge to be gained from other people's experience. So widen your horizon. Know a lot about, because leadership is not just about knowing your work. Mm -hmm. It's about being able to address a lot of issues. issues. So expand your horizon. Know m beyond your work, know about other things. And take up opportunities. When there are opportunities to volunteer, put yourself forward. Volunteer for positions. Volunteer to serve on um, committees. Um, be responsible. If something is done wrong, if nobody is correcting it, don't pass by, say, pencil on the floor or paper on the floor. Pick okay. it up. Sometimes it's what people see in you. It's not necessarily about the work the, because leadership is about all those other attributes. So take ownership of whatever responsibility you're given. Accept the blame when you're wrong. All right. You know, own, own your mistakes own your and mistakes. correct them. Correct. Own them and correct them. Yes. And learn from them. There will be setbacks. You of know, course. I don't think there's any perfect person mm -hmm. in this world. <laughs> you know, well, so there will be setbacks. But own up to them and, you know, overcome them. But yes. don't be discouraged. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you so I've learned quite a lot. Yes, yes definitely. definitely. I'm going to be bold from today and forth. I'm going to be bold. Mm -hmm. More. More mm. fire. And you need to speak more. <laughs> speak more speak about, more about your career. Speak exactly. more about the work because we need to change this territory. And and need apart to apart from that, I think the set of people you keep as friends mm -hmm. matters, matters a lot. Matters. Matters. Very, very no, there's important. a saying that you're the sum of the five people around you. Yes. yes. So look at your friends. friends. Mm -hmm. The five closest so people friends friends around, you. around you. Is that what you just is that what you want people, to be what like? People mm. who so okay. would inspire. All right. Okay. So on behalf of all of us on High Impact TV, we want to say a very big thank you coming to the show today. Thank you. Thank and you I should have so lunch with her. Too. She's a foodie, am I right? Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I, love I like love to try everything first. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Alright, thank, thank you, you so, so much, much for coming on the show. Thank okay, so we have me. to go, yes. It's still tea or coffee mm -hmm. on High Impact Television. Do not forget that Media Special is coming up shortly from now, so do stay tuned. Yes, my name is Buraola Pukwala. My name is Mudipe Jacobs. And God's time, David. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.